So next, we're going to talk about low energy. So in terms of the physical channel, with basic rate, we split the channel up into 79 different channels. In low energy, because the signal is slightly wider, we split it into 40 channels. And actually, we were a little bit more clever than that. We've got two types of channel. We've got something called an advertising channel and a data channel. An advertising channel is three fixed frequencies strategically placed around the ISM band to reduce interference with IEEE 802211. So those frequencies are 2402 megahertz, 2426 megahertz, and 2480 megahertz. So right on the left, somewhere in the middle between Wi-Fi channel one and Wi-Fi channel six, and right at the top end. The advertising channels are used to allow the discovery of devices for initiating a connection and also for broadcasting data. We've introduced a new capability with low energy into the Bluetooth ecosystem where you can just broadcast a small amount of data infrequently, like the temperature of the room, or is the window locked, or my name is Robin. You know, if you remember the talk this morning, he was talking about people going around and advertising who they are. Bluetooth low energy enables that using these advertising channels. And then if you want to send a reasonable amount of data, then we use the data channels. And there are 37 of those. Uh, we call them channel zero to channel 36. And obviously there's a break in the middle because there's an advertising channel in the middle, but effectively they're contiguous. And these are used to transfer data, a, a larger amount of data than just a few bytes of advertising data. So if you look at this from a frequency plan point of view, you can see that we've got these three advertising channels here in, indicated in red, and the 37 data channels, again, here indicated in blue. And you can see at the bottom that we've got this uh, uh, row called Wi-Fi. You can see where Wi-Fi channel one, Wi-Fi channel six, and Wi-Fi channel 11 sit. So these advertising channels don't interfere with Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi don't interfere with the advertising channels. So you can have a whole infrastructure of Wi-Fi in, for example, a corporate campus, and have these Bluetooth advertising devices on every single person, every single chair, and every single meeting room, and every single pen. And maybe a pen's going too far. Maybe not. Somebody can do a pen, Bluetooth pen. I'm always losing my pen. It would be nice to be able to find my pen sometime. In terms of L2CAP, L2CAP, as I said, is a multiplexing layer. And it is the multiplexing layer for Bluetooth, for both basic rate and low energy. It performs basically a very simple job of packet segmentation and reassembly. The radios have a variable length of packets that they can send. So in low energy, we can send up to 27 bytes per packet. In basic rate, it's somewhere between 17 bytes and 1,023 bytes. Somehow, you've got to be able to manage how your large L2CAT packets are sent over that medium. And we use L2CAP to do that. In low energy, we've defined three different L2CAP channels to allow us to send data across. And those are the attribute protocol channel, the signaling channel, so that's L2CAP signaling, and also a security manager protocol channel. Above L2CAP is something called the generic access profile. Again, this is something that is shared between basic rate and LE, and again, is something that is fairly critical to how Bluetooth has been successful. Because it, what it does is it basically says every single device, every single Bluetooth device has to be able to discover other devices, has to be able to pair and bond with another device so that you can have this long-term relationship have to be able to do some security information. You have to be able to establish connections, establish links. So what the generic access profile does is it defines all the procedures that you would need to do to do that. So we don't have to define it anywhere else. The alternative, the alternative would be that every single profile would have to define its own way of doing discoverability, its own way of doing security. And this is what other radio technologies do. Bluetooth did it right by using a single generic access profile. One of the other things it does is it defines what are known as the advertising and scan response data formats. 
Now, we can advertise data, as I said, but we don't know whether we can understand the data that the other device has transmi is transmitting because they may be a newer device than us. And of course, when you're advertising, there's no way to do an exchange of version numbers or features to work out whether you can support that or not. So what we did was we used something uh, which is fairly generic called a tag length uh, value field. So you have a tag that says this is what the data type is. You have a length which says this is how long the data is. And then you have the data. And you can concatenate all of those together into a single packet. And if you don't understand the tag, you just look at the length and go, OK, I don't understand the tag, but I know that the data for that is four bytes long. So I'm going to skip four bytes and then look at the next tag, which means that we are forward compatible with a future version of the specification, a future version of infrastructure. All the profiles are built on top of GAP. And in low energy, we define four different roles. So we can have a role of a broadcaster, which is obviously a device that broadcasts data. It's normally non-connectable advertising. And typically, a broadcaster never makes a connection at all. It literally is just broadcasting data. You have an observer, which allows you to observe broadcasters. And then we have two roles, which are probably more familiar, which are peripheral and central. So a central is the master role in terms of the lower layer topology, if you remember the topology diagrams from earlier. And a peripheral is the slave role.